So you're looking at getting into the international share market. Join me in this video. I'm going to be giving you some international index investment strategies. Hi, this is Yolanda and welcome to Financially Fabulous Females. On this platform, I give you easy, actionable tips, content and strategies that you can use to manage your money well and to build generational wealth. And we're talking about index investments and if you missed our last episode you can check it out here i gave you a brief introduction into the world of index investing today we're going to expand a little bit more we're going to be talking about some index investment strategies and to break down and understand the various kinds of funds that are available to us as investors in south africa the key thing to know about index investing is that it's a long-term strategy it's not like you're going to put some money into an index fund today and next week you're going to have tons of money when Amazon or Facebook just skyrockets. It's a long term strategy. It's a long term wealth building strategy. And the key to building wealth long term is that you have to be intentional and you have to be consistent with your money. And a great strategy to deploy when it comes to index investing is the dollar cost averaging method. And you can hear more about it here. And it basically means that every month or periodically, you're making small investments into this index fund, whether it's every two weeks, every month, every quarter, every year, but you're making intentional, consistent efforts to put money away to invest into this fund. So one of the benefits of dollar cost averaging is that whether the fund is high, whether the fund is low, eventually everything just averages itself out because you are making regular contributions into this fund. Now, there's always a risk to investments. So if this is a new concept to you, please speak to your financial advisor and try and get some advice as to how you can incorporate index investing into your investment strategy. If it's for you, um, I personally feel there's always room for index investing for, for any level of investor, actually. So speak to your advisor. If you don't have an advisor, I am an advisor with Solomon Wealth Management. So go check out our website. It's www.solomonwealth.co.za. Hit the Get Started button and uh, I could be sitting face to face with you via Zoom, of course. And we can be doing a complimentary analysis where we can assess your risk level and uh, try and incorporate index funds into your investments. There's also a link down below as well. So please, if you want some assistance with this type of investment strategies, hit that link and uh, leave your details and we'll reach out to you. So one of my favorite index funds is the S&P 500. And if you follow us on all of the platforms like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, and the Wealth Nation podcast, you'd know I speak about the S&P 500, every opportunity I get. But let's break down the S&P. What is in there? Why is it my favorite fund? Like we said in our last video, an index fund is basically a basket of shares. And at times it's thematic. So in the case of the S&P 500, so here's my very bad basket, okay? And in there, there's 500 companies. Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Tesla, General Electric. And there's 500 of these companies in the S&P 500. So S&P stands for Standards and Poor, the guys that basically downgrade us as a country ever so frequently. So they're a data management company. And they basically track tons of information and they've been tracking the top 500 companies on the United States since the 1930s or so. So the S&P 500 since that time, over that long period of time, has basically averaged around 10% a year for the longest of times. All right. So instead of you investing in each of these 500 shares directly by yourself, you make one payment into the S&P 500. Because imagine if you had to invest $1 in each of these shares. I mean, Berkshire Hathaway is over $1,000 a share. Amazon and all of that, over $1,000 a share. How many? How long will it take you to get into those companies and hold one share? So instead of investing a $500 a month into each of these companies, take that same $500 and invest it in the S&P 500, where you have exposure to over 500 large cap companies. So here's a 30 year snapshot of the S&P 500 returns. And you can see the type of growth that's involved. And you see those dips as well with the various financial crisis crises that came about. And since last year, 
the S&P 500 has returned almost 18% from since hard lockdown last year in March till now. So what does it really mean for us as investors? So let's put it in terms in which we can understand. Let's say we had 10,000 rand. Let's say we invested 10,000 rand in the bank. I think the interest rates that we're getting from the South African banks and average is around 5% a year, which is crazy since inflation is at 4.2%. So you're getting the 5% a year, you invest your 10,000 rand in this bank over, over 10 years. So after the 10 year period, you would have 16,000 odd rands, some change. So let's just make a note of this so we can see this comparison side by side. So you have, so you have 10,000, you invest it into the bank at a 5% per annum interest rate. After the end of 10 years, you're going to have just over 16,000 rand. Okay. So this is without factoring inflation. If we factor in a 4.2% inflation, this amount is only going to be around 11, just over 11,000 rand or so. But let's not complicate things and, and put in inflation, but just know when it comes to your investment and the investment return, always factor in inflation so you can get a real rate of return. And if we take that same 10,000 rand and invest it into a fund that's tracking the S&P 500 with a rate of 10% a year, over 10 years, what would we get? So 10,000 Rand in a fund tracking the S&P 500, average, giving you an average return of around 10%, although past performance is never indicative of future performance, would leave you with an amount of 25,000 Rands or so. And again, we haven't factored inflation into this amount. And if we do factor in inflation, it's just over 17,500 or so. So you can see the difference, the pros and cons right now. Would you rather take 16? or 25 after 10 years. So if you don't have a lump sum like 10,000, 20,000 or whatever the case is to invest in the S&P 500, what do you do? Well, you shouldn't panic. Firstly, you should try and make small investments into an index fund, whichever index fund that suits your level of risk. And that's the dollar cost averaging strategy. You can listen more about it where I spoke about it at the Wealth Nation podcast. And this is where you make small contributions towards this fund at whatever level it's at uh, in terms of price and with the hope of averaging out over time to give you some greater returns. So let's try and make sense of this. If we make a contribution of, let's say, a thousand rand a month over a 10 year period. So that's a contribution of 120,000 rand over 10 years. However, when it comes to investments, we always want to put an escalation up there in order for us to put more of our increases towards investments and also to keep up with the rate of inflation as well. With a 10% year escalation on all of this, your total contribution would be around almost, almost 200,000 rands. And that's over a 10 year period. Also, you gotta know that S&P 500 funds pay you dividends as well. Most funds pay you annually or semi-annually, semi whatever dividends that they are tracking and they receive, they basically mimic the performance of the S&P 500. All right, so that's basically how index investing works. It's a very rough strategy. And again, this is not financial advice. It's just basic financial education to give you an example of how index investing can be used as a beginner investor. So if this is something that interests you and you want to begin investing in a wide variety of low cost index funds from a South African platform, without using your offshore allocation, reach out or click the button down below and I can assist you.